PAX East is one of the biggest gaming conventions in the world, and Feral North is going to be there, but the demo hasn't been updated in seven months, so we got a bit of work to do. Welcome back to the Feral North devlog, my adventure game where you play as a border collie restoring color to the world. Most of my work lately has been on content beyond the demo, but there are a lot of improvements I've made that I'd love to get into an updated build. I rewrote the vegetation pipeline to be more performant and have better wind and collision effects. Shadows and textures are much crisper, and I just added waves and buoyancy to the ocean. Targeted jumping and the camera have seen some love to improve the overall feel of moving throughout the world, and the wisps you collect at the end of the demo for that super exclusive Discord role have improved lighting and contrast, just to name a few. The last demo build for Gamescom was about seven months ago, and it's been tested by thousands of players now, so I can really rely on it for festivals without major bugs popping up. But with packs coming, I do think it's time for an update. The first thing to do is boot up the demo mode for a playthrough and figure out if there are any bugs or touch-ups needed. There can't be too many, right? Cool, so that took about four days to go through all those fixes, but we did it guys. The new demo is live on Steam and PAX is going to be a huge success. So why is there so much time left in this video? Yeah, it's never that easy. This is a bug I've been waiting on Unity to fix for about two months now. Whenever there's more than one active camera, Unity creates a bunch of screen size textures per camera per frame, which is just killing the frame rate. I traced the issue to this line inside Unity's URP, posted some details on the forums, and they have confirmed they have a fix being tested internally, but there's no estimate on a release date. This is partially my fault. I've been upgrading to the bi-weekly text stream release for about three years now, and I definitely know that that comes with risks. I'm normally completely fine with it, I just don't have time right now. Downgrading to an old Unity version isn't an option, so I need to figure out a fix or wait for Unity. It's only a problem when there's more than one camera, and there are three cameras in the demo, so basically I just need to find a way to get rid of two. There's the main camera for the game view, which is obviously non-negotiable, and overhead camera is used for the grass bending effect, but I actually just rewrote the vegetation shaders and removed the need for that camera entirely, so that one's actually solved. So that just leaves one we still need to remove, and that's used for the canoe color trail. It's responsible for drawing the wake to a texture that I use for the color effect, and to be honest I have no idea how I'm going to replace that one, so right now I'm a little bit nervous that I won't be able to release the demo in time for packs. I do need to get this build out to testers though, so I'm just going to leave it as a known issue for now and hope Unity comes through for me in the meantime. Testing went pretty smoothly with just a few small fixes until, well, one Discord member found the big one. Goofer had a hard crash every time the lighthouse came into view in the opening cutscene. I had no idea what was going on, each crash had different and incomplete logs, but it was always at the same moment. With no ideas, I kind of had to hope that this was just a faulty GPU or something, and then... Another crash. In the exact same place, with the same peculiar logs, but this time, from a cockatoo. Yeah, that's their name, I'm, I'm not actually sure if they're a cockatoo. But that's two out of only a dozen testers, so there's no way it's a coincidence. At this point, between that canoe issue and this crash, that old Gamescom demo is looking pretty good. But we're not quitters on this channel, fam, so after a handful of test fixes, debug builds, and a few dozen crash logs, we finally prevailed, and... No, I'm just kidding. The only thing we knew was that it only seemed to impact AMD GPUs, and one symbol reliably showed up in the logs, 0x887A0005, which thankfully everyone knows means... Oh, actually, no. That's not meaningful at all. I have no idea what that means, Unity. And just as I was taking down that video about not switching to Unreal, a quick search of the error code showed it seems to impact big games like Call of Duty, there's loads of Unreal threads about it, and yeah, plenty of Unity ones as well, so it's gotta be something at a lower level. So I traced it to the source, and it turns out this error code is coming from DirectX, and it means the GPU was physically removed from the system. Now I like to think I know a shader trick or two, but I definitely can't eject your graphics card with one, so what's going on? Unless the testers are sabotaging their own machines, I'm going to assume the GPU is in fact connected, but maybe it's just crashed and rebooted? Since it only impacts AMDs, and I'm definitely not forgetting that I have one right in front of me, we spent two days sending builds and logs back and forth to try random fixes, but nothing worked or even marginally helped. Just as I considered buying an AMD GPU, I remembered my laptop totally has two GPUs, and the second one's an AMD chip, so I can probably reproduce this myself. Sure enough, switching to the AMD chip gave me the exact same crash in the same place, and even better, I was able to use the AMD chip in the editor and reproduce the crash inside Unity. And what's interesting is I didn't even need to play the game, just looking at the lighthouse in the scene view was enough to crash the GPU, like this lighthouse is possessed by Sauron or something. But I can look at the other lighthouses all day and there are hundreds of things rendering here, so for issues like this, the best way to find the cause is a sort of binary search. You disable half the world, see if it crashes, wait six days for Unity to restart, 
I repeat with the half that does crash over and over until you isolate the troublemaker. I managed to track the issue to the terrain shader and then repeat the process by disabling half the shader code until I found the cause and it all came down to this innocent little function. And at this point, I have to honestly tell you that I have absolutely no idea what the problem is. I checked every variable, there's no infinite loop or divide by zero or anything like that, and this function gets called later as well without issue. It runs fine on Nvidia cards and on AMDs for every other part of the terrain, it's only when you look at this one specific area, so I'm genuinely stumped. If you can tell me what the problem is here, please do. Thankfully though, it just so happens I don't need any of this. It's old code that should have been removed a long time ago anyways, so I'm going to drop all of it and sure enough, problem solved. Along the way, I thought the GPU might just be getting overloaded, so I also set up a base map shader to reduce GPU load on distant terrain chunks. It didn't solve the problem at all, but it does really improve the terrain shading and performance, so a bit of a double win I guess. So at this point, things were looking pretty good, but that color trail issue was still killing me. I can't release with that. I can't remove the effect because it's the main feedback for the whole canoe rhythm mechanic, but it doesn't look like Unity's fix is going to be ready in time, so it's back to the drawing board. I went through the usual suspects to try to come up with some alternative approach for the effect, but I couldn't use the stencil buffer because the ocean already uses the stencil for another purpose. I couldn't use decals because URP doesn't support decals on transparent surfaces, and actually, I have an idea. I wrote a render pass to draw the wake particles to a texture, just like I was doing before, but during the main camera rendering. Right before drawing the particles, I override the projection matrix to use the matrix from the canoe camera, basically tricking the shader into thinking it's being drawn from the top-down camera, meaning I can keep that camera disabled so it's not actually doing the drawing. This way it bypasses Unity's faulty code, and I still end up with the same texture in the end. As a bonus, this is actually another nice performance boost because there's a lot of overhead to additional cameras that I no longer need to pay for. This actually works so well that I generalized it and updated some effects used outside the demo, so they no longer need additional cameras either. And with that, I think we're ready for PAX. Thanks so much for watching, I hope it was interesting to see what goes into silly little things like updating a demo build. I glossed over a lot of little stuff, and let's not even talk about the three days spent watching Unity compile shaders only to keep stripping all the lighting variants. Everything in game development takes more time than you expect, and when games take so long to make, it's always a little tricky to know where your time's going to be best spent. So if you have the time, go check out the latest demo build up on Steam for Windows and Mac, and let me know how you get on with it. This is a much more polished version and something I'm really much more proud of, so it would mean a lot to hear what you think of all the improvements down below. In any case though, I'll see you next time.